All right, welcome back to the SSL Family Dad channel. Today we're talking all about processing wood. Now I know that this might be controversial because I always get lots of, uh, lots of great ideas and opinions about how to process wood and, and how people like to do it. So today I'm gonna to take you through the process that I have found to be the easiest and most efficient. Now I don't always use this process. There's lots of different factors that come into this, where I get wood from, when I get it, what time of year it is, and all these kinds of things. But these are my best practices uh, over the last few years of, of burning wood, both with the outdoor wood boiler and with our new indoor wood stove that this is we're into our second season on. So you'll see that I have a few things set up here. Um, I've got the tractor out, I've got some big logs that were cut and they've been seasoned. These have been sitting here for about a year and a half. They were sitting at the edge of our property up on pallets. So there's lots of different ways to get to this point, but I like to keep the logs as big as possible when I bring them home. So if I'm out you know, uh, working somewhere and they have equipment or something that I can use to load into a trailer, big sections like this, this is what we did in this case, like 12, 12, 14 foot sections, uh, and bring them home and let them season that way, that's the best way to go. Then I can bring them over and process them right at the same place that I'm gonna stack that wood. If I'm in my own forest here on my own property, I'll get the tractor out with the forks and I can go back into the woods, I can cut big sections of tree and uh, load the bucket up with smaller pieces and bring loads up and set them right here by our So bar. you can see that I have uh, everything brought up here. Behind me I've got the uh, log that's sitting up on some four by fours so that I can cut that with the chainsaw and not get in the dirt. So you wanna keep it up off the ground. Uh, put it on pallets or, or some type of wood uh, to just to keep it off the ground. And then I've got the splitter right on the other side of that set up and ready to go where I can roll those logs into place. These are really big pieces of cherry so they're gonna be heavy. I'm gonna roll them into place and split those uh, with the uh, vertical position of the, of the splitter. And then we'll take that split wood and I'll toss it right into the area behind me where it's gonna be stacked. Now, of course, some other options, people like to take their splitters out into the wood and process all the wood out, you know, wherever they cut the tree down and then load it into a trailer or a truck and bring it back up this way. I do not like to do that. Uh, I don't like to take the splitter back into the woods and deal with all that. And then once I've got that log split up, this log right here, I mean, this is a pickup truck load full of split wood. So that's, that's a, a whole lot more pieces of wood that I have to put my hands on and move and carry and load into a truck and then unload and stack here. Doing it this way, I have my least amount of physical hands-on on this wood. I've got it up here with mostly equipment and then I can cut it, split it, and stack it right in the same area so this whole job is done at once. So let's get this uh, log cut and I'll show you a few tricks on how to size the logs before you split. All right, so before I start cutting logs to their final size, you first wanna know what size your wood stove takes. So if you've got a wood boiler, you're gonna be using some bigger logs. Maybe you can cut 36 inch pieces, uh, 24 inch pieces, whatever it is. Our stove is an 18 inch box. So I like to cut everything at about 16 to 17 inches. I like to leave a little air gap on either side of the log when we put it in there. I don't want it to, sh you know, I don't want it to fit tight. And so uh, I like to cut everything at 16 inches. So what I've found, so I'll measure right from the end of the chain and I'll measure on my bar. I'm gonna put a mark at 18 inches and a mark at 16 inches. So this is the area that I want my, uh, mark, my cuts to be in between. So I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna put a mark right down that bar. Now, if you're worried about putting marks on your chainsaw bar, well, that's on you, but uh, th these are tools, not antiques. So they're meant to be used and uh, this will wear right off anyway. You'll have to redo this every couple times that you, uh, that you use it. So now I've got my measurements right on the bar. I don't need my tape measure anymore. We can file that away nicely. So now each cut that I make is gonna be in between these lines somewhere. And so what I usually like to do is I'll take this and slide it right up to the end of the log I'll stick the tip on the log and then I'll just spin around like this and then I'll start making my cut. So that should be right at, if I, if I start at the end of the log, that'll be right at uh, between 16 and 18 inches somewhere. That's totally fine. So you're gonna see here in a moment, when I get to the end here, I don't know exactly what I'm gonna turn out, but most likely when I get to the end of this log, I'm gonna have a leftover piece. So it's not gonna be an exact you know, increments of 16, 16 and 16. I'm gonna have a piece that's gonna be shorter than that, most likely. So I also take a measurement of my wood stove depth. So how deep is the wood stove? And ours is about 10 or 11 inches deep that I'm comfortable putting a piece of wood in that way. So if my end cut is less than 10 inches, then I'll leave it as is, and that'll actually get split into pieces that I can fit in the uh, stove long way. So I can actually feed them in this way. I can put a, a longer 16 inch log in this way, and then I can put on top of it some smaller split pieces that actually fit in the depth of the stove. 
Uh, if my piece is longer than that, if it's maybe, I don't know, maybe 15 inches or something like that, a lot of times I'll cut that right in half. So I end up with about two, seven or eight inch pieces. And again, I'll use those as little fill in pieces in the wood stove. It's great for overnight to just fill in the gaps. Great to have little chunks and pieces uh, with every load I take in the house. So that's just another way to make the best use of every little bit of this wood and uh, be able to get that stove nice and full so you have the longest burn time. So another note, once your log's in place, I have this up on four by fours. I'm also gonna take a few measurements here of where my cuts are gonna be. And I'm gonna put some, some wood underneath this log in between. Uh, and that's just so as I'm cutting this, that the log has something to rest on and it's not uh, binding my saw. I wanna keep this off the ground and I wanna keep it stable for every single cut that I make. Well, it doesn't usually happen like that, but this is actually perfectly equal uh, 16 or 17 inch pieces. So there was no, no leftover on this one. So I've got the next log ready to go. So I'm gonna roll all these out of the way and get them over by the splitter. And then I've got this log, we'll cut that up. And then I've got one more ready to go, we'll cut up. And then we'll put the tractor away and then we will go ahead and move on to splitting. done with all the cutting really so the uh, chainsaw work is done so we can put that away and we can move on to splitting so it's really only this piece that came out to uh, quite a bit less than 16 inches so we'll split that up into some good chunks and uh, I really like the burning those shorter pieces so that'll be nice to to have mixed in we'll go ahead and fire up the splitter now and we'll get the uh, the splitting done so when I'm splitting I'm looking for kind of three different sizes I've got the big chunk like like this chunk right here uh, as square as possible I don't like to do uh, triangles like this this was just a smaller piece of wood but uh, as many flat pieces as I can as many square chunks or rectangular chunks that's what I'm looking for uh, so this is a great size for for an overnight log uh, this cherry is a great has a nice hot coals it's great to throw in overnight so usually every bin a, a load of wood i take in i'll put one or two big pieces like this so if we're going to be gone for a few hours or again for overnight we'll throw the big pieces in then i also like to have some smaller pieces like this uh, so we'll get some slivers off there and uh, uh, some smaller pieces this is good for starting the fire in the morning um, and uh, throwing that in on a hotbed of coals and that'll get going really quick and then kind of the medium size here again i'm trying to do everything in rectangles i don't like to cut in in triangles if possible so 
uh, whenever I can split, especially big pieces like this, I have the opportunity to, uh, to get into rectangles. This is what I'm looking for. These things fit in the, the stove perfectly. They lay in there nice and flat. They're, they don't roll out, you know, if you open the door or something leans or burns the wrong way, you know, you open the door, it doesn't fall out. These still lay nice and flat in there and you can fit quite a bit of wood in. This will fit right on top of other logs and other things like that. So uh, I really like to have uh, rectangles like this. So that's what we're going to be uh, looking for here. And one of the reasons I really like this particular wood splitter is because it has the option of going horizontal for smaller stuff. I can, you know, just pick it up and set it on there, you know, on the top this way, and then I can put this up vertically. Uh, to roll these big logs underneath it so they're still still a little bit tough to manhandle under there and uh, move around but uh, this thing works great this is a 35 ton and it'll power through just about anything even knots and branches and all that kind of stuff in these logs it'll just power through it all so we'll go ahead and get this split and then we'll get it in a stack So you'll notice that as I'm splitting, I have this little bin next to the splitter and I just throw, you're, you're going to end up with all these little shavings and pieces and stuff like that, especially with this cherry, it's kind of stringy. So uh, I throw that all in a bin and then I'll keep this in with the stack of wood. The best place that I have to store this wood is out here in the barn. What I do is every day I come out with a bin, a little tote, Rubbermaid tote. I'll fill that up in the morning and then sometime later in the afternoon and that'll get us through the night. So when I come out in the nighttime or in the evening to fill that bin up, I'll grab some of those little shavings, those little pieces, and I'll throw those in the bottom of the bin. So that way, when I come to restart the stove in the morning time, there's usually some coals left in there, and I can just sprinkle some of those little shavings in the bottom and then throw some logs on top, and then 10 minutes later, that's a, it'll start right up. So I use every little bit of this wood that I can, and that way I'm not going to worry about any kindling or anything like that. I've got it all kind of pre-made as I'm splitting. So I've still got quite a bit more splitting to do, but you'll see we've got our various sizes here. So this is a good chunk here for an overnight log. Uh, this is a, a nice smaller piece to throw in during the day or in the morning. And then I've got some even smaller pieces uh, in here as well that'll uh, burn real quick. But most of the stuff is medium sizes like this, chunks like that. And uh, that stuff will, will be perfect to throw in throughout the day. So there's lots of different ways to stack wood, and I'm, I'm not gonna focus too much on this part. Uh, what I've been doing is putting these T-posts in at the end and then just stacking right along here. Now, generally I like to leave a gap between my stacks. That way all the random pieces like this, the odd chunks and the small pieces and things like that, I can stack in between the rows. So this is actually a little small of a gap. I've been working off this stack and it's kind of fallen down, but uh, generally I'll leave a gap in between them so I can throw those little pieces, little end cutoffs and all that kind of stuff that'll fit in between. Leaving the gap in between the stacks also allows air to flow a little bit better through them and it'll allow it to dry out and continue to season. The best way to stack this wood, I like to stack it real high. I don't, I'm not measuring face cords or anything like that. So this is probably, that's an eight foot stack right here. And you can see I've got various kinds of wood in here and I try to stack it in layers. So I've got some cherry, I've got some silver maple or maple in there and there's some oak scattered in there as well uh, along the top. So. Uh, that way, as I work off the end of the stack, I'll be coming out here uh, soon. This will be the after I'm done with these two stacks, I'll start working on this one. And I'll work from the front to the back of that stack. And that way I get various kinds of wood with each bin. So if I want some overnight pieces, I'll grab some oak or some cherry. And then if I want stuff to just burn quicker and hotter throughout the day, then I'll grab some of the softer stuff like the maple um, or whatever kind of soft wood you have. 
So unfortunately with this uh, set here, I only have cherry. And so this is just gonna be a whole row of cherry. You could also do one stack of cherry, one stack of oak, one stack of, stack of maple or pine or, or something that burns real quick. And then you could work off of all three stacks as you go in. That way you can get maybe one of each uh, or several of each when you take a bin in for your stove. Well, it looks like I'm going to have to finish this up another day. I've officially run out of daylight here, and so uh, I'll get this stacked at another time. There are lots of different ways to do these types of things. I'm sure I always hear lots of great suggestions, so I'd love to hear from you guys. What are your tips? What are your suggestions? Uh, maybe I'll take some of the things that I hear from you guys and apply those to the operation that we have here, and maybe we'll share those in a later video. So I always like to hear from you guys your, your tips and tricks, so share those down in the comments. Of course, don't forget to hit thumbs up on today's video, and if this is your first First time to the SSL Family Dad channel, well, we'd love to have you subscribe. Hit that subscribe button and the bell next to it to keep uh, getting notifications when we post new content. So, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Have a good one.